piece. Ooh. 2.3, yeah. You don't see that many of them, do you? No, no. Um, I think I'm in negotiating the deal with this gentleman, haven't I? It's about 40,000 miles, something like that. Not too sure, I haven't had a look yet. No, it's mileage, I think you're fine. How many? 50, 58, like, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I knew it was about 40. It's um, <laughs> a lovely car, aren't they? Yeah. We, uh, we love these in their day, you know, and, and it's, it's got a little bit of one or two little issues, as you can see. But find oh, another one, that's the thing. You've got to put up with a few bits and pieces. If you want a Magnum uh, coot like this, or Forenza coot or whatever you want to call them, um, you've just got to put up with one or two little issues because they ain't out there. As simple as that. They were ever so, ever so much in demand when they were sort of fairly newish. Look at that, supplying dealers. Um, rear window sticker in there, look at that. Um, what an honest old car. And it was the 2.3 was the ultimate. They've done an 18 as well, of course, but the 2.3 was the ultimate. Absolute flying machine, you know, quick car. Very quick out, out the blocks and um, very competitive. Not too many of the guys used them up against the RS 2000s and stuff like that and escorts and what have you, uh, Mexico's and that. They didn't seem to use these as much. And I can't honestly understand why. Because, strictly speaking, they were a quicker, more competitive class. Um, and I tell you what I used to find with them, the guys on the periphery of motorsport, like the navigators, if you like, and and um, and, and, and guy, guys like that that are interested in motorsport, but but didn't really actually compete in it themselves personally, they seem to drive them. I, I don't explain, can't explain that why that is, but it's a fact of life. But it's a lovely car, ever so popular in Luton and Dunstall, which is where I was at the time, um, and pretty costly. They were they were fairly expensive. When one came on the market second hand, two or three year old get to pay a premium, I suppose because of their scarcity. But what a nice old car. Had a big paint job, obviously. Can't do anything about that, can you? Nice colour. Yes, yeah, right wheels. Everything looks right, that vinyl roof, right? That is exactly the right, I can't imagine that's been replaced. I think you'll find that original. Because that's exactly the right material. That's exactly the right material. Uh, yeah, seats are all right. It's all, it's all, as far as I can see, it's dead genuine, dead right. It's exactly how it should be. No question about that. Yeah, a little bit of glue coming through on the headlining and stuff like that, and it's clearly stood around a little bit. A little tiny bit mildew, isn't she? Just wants a really nice, good wet back out. Mm. Pop a good glue on it. Um, a really big clean, a little bit of rubber there, wants sticking back. But um, generally speaking, you know, as I say, it's had, it's had a big paint job, and the, you know, one or two little bits and pieces have been touched in and odds and sods. Um, I don't remember them being in primer underneath here, so I don't know quite what to make of that, but I'm sure that. Must be right. I don't yeah, know. Right. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I can't quite work out all that really, but um, I don't remember them being in in Maker's Primer because that's clearly what that is, isn't it? I, um, so I don't know what to say about that really. But um, rest of it, yes, it's, it's pretty good, isn't it? It's, I think I think it's like a lot of cars out there. You've you've just got a little bit of a porridge area, isn't it? You've just got to make allowances when you're looking at the condition of the car. You've got to make allowances for the rarity of it. Um, so, what I'm trying to say is, and it's had a bit of issue and a little bit of filler because they went and dropped them up there. That, that one there is not quite the same shape as that one there, as you can see, isn't it? Um, I bought a flatbed sander, a short flatbed bed sander, which I've still got, to do these. Because they used to rot from there, right up here. Uh, so, we used to glass them up, and the flatbed sander was just absolutely perfect for doing it. And you've got to be a little bit careful on the edge here because they raise up, look like that one does. This one ain't quite as raised as it should be. But, um, so yeah, what I'm going on to say is that it's a decent example, looks genuine, looks proper. You've just got to put up with one or two imperfections if you want one. If you want a perfect one, you're going to die before you find one. That's all I'm saying. Lovely car.